Hey everyone, it's me. Everyone knows Dave. And as always, I have a question. Are you sick of paying ridiculous prices for poor performing limited web-based rental servers? Maybe you're paying for a dedicated box and it's leaving your bank account feeling a little... Well, sad. Well, that won't do. That's why in this video, we're going to show you how you can set up your very own free, free, dedicated DAISY server on any old standard PC. It could be an old Dell. An old HP. That gaming machine you used to use before you got a new one. Or even that one from the shed. Uh, um... Okay, well maybe not one of those. Uh, anyway, it works on all Windows and Windows 7 upwards, and most machines are suitable. And it's really easy! Okay, so first we start by going to our Steam, we go to our library here, we go to this tab where it says Games, we click it and we select Tools, and then we scroll down until we find Daisy Server, which for me is at the top, because funnily enough, it's one of my favourites. We right click and we install that. And there we go, that started uh, downloading, and we allow that to download, and then once it's downloaded in seven minutes for me, we come back and move on to the next stage. A few moments later... Okay, so now we've got the Steam files downloaded. Thank you very much, Steam, for giving us our server. We're going to go to where our server is. We're going to copy it. We're going to go to the root of our C drive, and we're going to paste it there. It's going to tell me that there's uh, already one there, because obviously, as you can imagine, I've done this many times. What we're now going to do is go to the link in the description. Now, the link in the description is actually a Discord link. Mainly because we kept uploading these bat files in older videos, and because the bat are executables, it was a bit difficult for people to download, and the hosts kept taking them down. So what you're going to do is you're going to join the legendary server, you're going to go to general chat, and you're going to type start.bat. Which will instantly provide you with the bat file required. Then once you have downloaded the bat file, what you're going to do is you're going to copy the bat file into your DAISY server. Like so. Then we're going to open this file here, serverdz.cfg. And what we're going to do is under this line here where it says max players, we are going to type steam query port space equals space 2305 little semicolon. And I will make sure that's in the description too so you can copy and paste it. Oh, yes. Right. So we've got the files or we've got the base files. What we're going to do is we're going to go into our start bat here. We're going to go down and we're going to ensure, as it says here, that it says minus profiles equals profiles folder. That's very important. What that's going to do is create a specific folder called profiles folder where all your profiles are. Much easier than digging through your server trying to find where the profile folder is. So let's run it. Now, obviously, this isn't going to appear in the community tab or anything. We're not even trying to do that yet. All we're trying to do is get it to, well, to be quite frank, sort its files out. So there's our console window. We will allow it to read the mission and we want to leave it all the way until it gets uh, to entering in save process. Once it done, does uh, what well, done, once it's done that, we know that it's loaded every file that it needed to load and created all the files that it needed to create. So you just have a little bit of a patience while it reads through all its files. And there we go. So, now what we do is we close that, we close that, and we close that. And what we need to do is prepare the computer to go on the internet in the first place. Well, to go on the, the server to go on the internet in the first place. So let's do that now. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're first going to search for firewall. And then we're going to go to Windows Defender Firewall. Here we're going to click Advanced Settings. And we're going to go to Inbound Rules. We're going to create a new rule, which is a port. It is 2302 to 2305. It is TCP to start with. We're going to allow the connection. And we're going to give it a name. This name could be anything you want. It doesn't matter. And we're going to do the same again. We're going to go port. This time we're going to select UDP. And 2302 minus 2305. Again, we want to make sure it says allow. And we give it any old name. Now, next we're going to do outbounds. Now here, be careful. It's very easy to start speeding through this, you know, because you've just seen what we're doing, uh, and make a big, massive, huge mistake. So here is TCP. This screen defaults to block 
every time on outbound. Make sure you change it to allow or it is simply not going to work. And of course, make sure you make one for TCP and UDP. Or again, it won't work. So UDP and allow. There we go. And give it any old name. Okay, so now we have the files. We have our firewall open. But we don't have our router or our modem open or talking properly. So that's what we need to do now. Now, this is the one where most people are going wrong. And I think a lot of the time it's because it's a little confusing, a little garbled and a little bit misinformative. So I'm going to keep this as simple as humanly possible. I'm going to try not use any jargon, not use any special words. We're going to get straight to the nitty gritty of what we're actually looking for. So we're going to go to our router or our modem. Now, it'll be almost the same procedure for most people. It'll be 192.168.0.1 in your browser window. So your Chrome, your Edge, your Firefox, your Opera GL or whatever it is. In there, we'll come to a screen somewhere similar to this. Click anything to get in and immediately you're going to get asked for a password. The password is on the bottom of your modem. If it's not on the bottom of your modem or your router, then it's admin, admin. Or it'll be something even more stupid such as admin, Sky, admin, now TV. It's genuinely that stupid of a password. But like I said, should be on the bottom of your router. Now what you're looking for is you're looking for two things. You're looking for something that will say service type and port. So something that's going to give you an option of TCP, UDP. And something that's going to give you an option to put a start and end range of ports in. On the now TV, for example, that comes under services. It may come under a slightly different name, such as port forwarding. But flick through, flick through all your tabs until you can find something that looks like this. Pretty much, if you go to add something and it doesn't look like this, just press the cancel button. If you don't save anything, you can't really do any harm. And it's a router. If you break it, unplug it, leave it for half an hour and plug it back in and it'll be fine. So, for us, what we're going to do is we're going to add a service. Now, obviously, I do apologise. I've got terrible hay fever today. Um, we're going to call this whatever we want. I'm just going to call this uh, YouTube1234. Um, we want TCP and UDP. Now, you're going to use 2302 to 2305. And the reason being is that's the default for Steam and the default for DayZ. Makes your life easier. I can't do that, however, because I've already got several servers running. So I'm going to go to 902 to 2905 that's just going to make my life easier so i can show you that it works uh we add uh, this here and as you can see we now have a service now what we need to do is we need to tell it where that's going now for me that's in firewall rules now this is not as confusing as it looks basically all this is going to say is what is that port that you've set up and where do i send it to so the first thing we do is we go to our outbound what are services for us. This will be somewhere under your firewall. And the outbound one is dead easy. All you do is select those ports that you just opened, which for me involves going on this service and selecting this one here. And then you leave everything else as it is and you click apply. Yeah, simple as that. In fact, actually, uh, I did that slightly wrong there. You see how easy it is to go into a pitfall? I accidentally did IP6 instead of IP4, you see? That was silly. So we're going to do it again. IP4 settings, not IP6 settings. IP6 settings won't work. So you do the IP4 settings, you leave all of this blank, and that does the uh, the outbound. The outbound is, is pretty much, you know, it doesn't really need to know where it's coming from. Everything's plugged into it, it already knows. The inbound is where it's important. Now, the inbound service is what you're looking for is you're looking for something like this. Something where it's giving you an option for an IP4 address to send it to, an IP address, and an option for a bunch of ports to open. Now, for us, this involves setting up a service, as you've seen, and then connecting the service to the associated IP. For you, it might mean all of this on one screen. It might ask you for the IP and then the ports on the same screen. If it's laid out like that, don't worry, it will still work. What we need to know exactly though is what is the IP we're sending to. So on the machine that you're actually going to be running your server from, what you're going to do is you're going to go to a little box here and you're going to click network and internet settings. 
You're then going to click properties of your Ethernet because you should not be trying to run a server on Wi-Fi. That is silly. Don't do it. You're going to scroll down and you're going to find your IPv4 address, which here for me is 192.168.0.3. So I'm simply going to put that in on my inbound services. 192.168.0.3. And we're going to click apply. So now my router knows that anything that's sent to that port should be sent to this machine, which means when somebody requests to join a server or when the hive wants to look for the server, it's going to go, oh, I know where to send that information. I need to send it to that computer. So, right, we're ready to actually do some server stuff. Okay, so that was the likes of BT, Now TV and Sky. Now we're going to do TP-Link, which should cover most of the rest of the internet service providers. Obviously, if, the, if your router doesn't look like either of these two, pop over to the Discord and get one of our team to assist you. But on the TP link, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Advanced. We're going to go to NAT Forwarding. And we're going to go to Virtual Servers. And as you can see, similar to the other one, what we want is an external port and the IP. So I happen to know what each of these systems go to. And uh, to add them. What you would do is put in the port of the computer here. So 192.168.0. Whatever the computer is. The external port is where you would put the 2302 to 2305 or 2402. Depending on what you're using for that server. The internal port you leave blank. You put any old name in here. And you set this to all. And then you click save. Uh, just like with the other one. You do. Uh, it is wise to put your LAN into reserved. Which we do in here. We go network, LAN, and as you can see, client list assigned, and then address reservation. So here we can see we've got some other ones that aren't on here, like the Galaxy S9, for example. If I wanted to, I could go in here, and we would go MAC address scan. We'd find the 100. We would pop it in there, and there you go. That would now, now the S9 is always using that IP, which remember, you're going to have to do. Otherwise, when the router resets, it won't connect. See how simple and quick I've made that? So just to reiterate, virtual servers, add it here in the external, leaving the internal blank, TCP and UDP. Network, LAN settings, add your device to address reservation. Okay, so we have what we believe to be a running server. So the first thing I'm going to do is go through and ensure that all my ports are correct. So for you, these should all be 2302 to 2305. For us, obviously, we know that it's 29 because... You know, I've already got a 2305, so I'm going to change the Steam query port in there. I'm going to go to my start bat here, and I'm going to change them in here. Now, remember, yours should be 2302. 2302, both here and here. And it should be 2305 in the server DZ. The names have to exactly match. So it says first attempt here, and it says first attempt here the dz uh, uh dz Z -S -A -L mod server xe and mod server log should be in the same route as your bat your server dz and your daisy server x64 they're really important if they're not please ignore my phone if they're not it won't work so let's boot it and let's see if first attempt can actually be found because we've opened those ports now it should now be on the launcher so we open the launcher and I recommend using vanilla launcher because Daisy standalone launcher is pretty broken. And we're going to search for first. And there it is. First attempt, look. One blank Cherno server with no mods. And as you can see, look, it's on 2902. Obviously, yours should be on 2302. So we have a server. Great. But it's, it's, it's just a server. You know, it's just another vanilla server. It, it, it might as well be a, a standard server. Obviously, this is just a vanilla server. And if you're sick and tired of all the vanilla style servers, and this video hasn't made you so mad that you haven't smashed your screen yet, then go ahead and watch this video to teach you how to add mods. Now, we suggest you open this in a new tab and put it on the side because we're about to teach you the basic parameters of your server to do a little bit more editing without mods first. Then you can go and mod the F out of it. So, basic parameters, and as always, before you do anything else, shut down your server. Because if you try and edit things on the servers running, things start going very wrong. 
So we open our server DZ, and this is how we set the very basic parameters of the server. Now this is quite simple, it looks quite complicated, but it's not. It's really simple, trust me. So, here we go, enable whitelist. Uh, this is if you want only specific people to be able to connect to your server, not something that most people do, to be honest. Password here. Uh, quite useful if you're developing your server, you can put a password on to stop people getting in until you've finished your server. Max players, as we've discussed, you can go all the way up to 117 on that, by the way. Do not touch these, it will break your server. Uh, this will disable the voice, so if you don't want pe people to be able to talk in game and I can't understand why you'd want that, you can use that. Um, this here is a 0 to 30. The higher you put this, the better people's voice will sound, but the slower your server will go. This is disable third person, so if we change this to 1, now you can only use first person. This is the crosshair. If we change this to 1, there's now no crosshair. This is your personal light. I suggest you leave it on 1, because when you change it to 0, it's like you've permanently got a glow stick attached to you, and it's very annoying. Now this is the time acceleration and nighttime acceleration. Uh, this is it's not as complicated as it looks. This here multiplies the in-game time in total, day and night. This accelerates night, but it's based on this. So this at the moment is 1 times 12. So the day is 12 times faster than real life, and the night is 1 times faster than that. If we set this to 2, for example, this is now 2 times faster than the night, so this is now 24. Be careful with that. When we were first doing this, we set that number very high and nighttime went so quickly that you could literally blink and miss it. Other than that, your only other things you actually need in here is if you change your map. This is where your options are to change your map. And if you have a problem with too many people logging into your server at once and they can't get in the queue, you can increase this number and it will allow more people to queue up. So that's pretty much the basis of how to set up a server. I hope this video has been slightly more simple than our previous ones. I hope this has made it slightly easier and hopefully we can see even more of you creating epic servers and creating more developments for the Daisy community because at the end of the day that's what we all want and we all need. I've been Everyone Knows Dave. Please give us a like and subscribe if we've helped you and we shall see you next time.